What who? My name is Chanella, and I say welcome to the Warrior Guides. Now, what is the Warrior in this current state? Well, we are in a very good state. We're one of the most versatile classes that you will ever have. In my opinion, it's very fun to play, and everything you have as a warrior is complete. You are finished, there's no missing abilities, anything like that. You've got more solo capabilities than you did back in the day, however, you're still going to be bad because we barely have any heals. Nevertheless, we have three specializations as we always had. Protection, Fury and Arms. Protection is now a boss tank. You have low damage and low threat, but your tanking is incredibly strong. Compared to any other specialization in the game, you've got the most mitigation ever. And this mitigation makes you a beast as a boss tank. However, you are bad in impacts and whenever there's more than one target. The Fury Warrior is a very AoE damage spec right now. So, single target damage you will be lower than arms, but AoE damage, even with two targets, you will be straight up on the meters all the way to the top. Your damage is insane whenever there's two targets or more, up to five targets. You've got more sustain than Arms Warrior, so you're a very sustained damage kind of thing. And then you've got Arms. Now, Arms is single target damaging tank. Um, I'm saying tank because, well, you are able to actually tank as an Arms Warrior. It's insane. So this means you're a good off tank as well, but your single target damage is insane. It's absolutely insane. Also quite good in the burst kind of damage, and you're a solo specialization. Now, why is this a tank? Your threat generation is really, really low, but this means you have to combine yourself together with a hunter or a rogue or anything that that way, so they can actually redirect all threat towards you, making you the good main tank. Mind you, you don't have the mitigation you need, but I will go into details on that later. First of all, first and foremost, um, we're going to play the Protection Warrior. Now, what does a Protection Warrior bring to us? Nothing much has changed in terms of abilities. Your Revenge now is an AoE ability, hitting everything rather than three targets, and your Shield Block is now 10 Rage rather than 60 Rage. The reason this is, is because we've got a new ability called Ignore Pain. Everything else is quite the same, so you've got your Last Stand, you've got your Shield Wall, you've got your Devastate, you've got your Shield Slam, You've got your Thunderclap, you've got your Impending Victory if you need, you've got the Revenge, nothing much has changed. You've got a Taunt, Berserker Rage, and so forth. Also, as a tank right now, your threat generation, as I said, for a, for a Protection Warrior is incredibly low. And what you will see happening quite often is whenever you've got another tank in the group, in order to keep targets, um, in order to keep yourself busy with one target, you will be spamming heroic throw before the fight. You will never ever charge into a fight. What will happen is, whenever you've got a boss in front of you, you will heroic throw from the furthest of range until the target comes close to you. And the reason this is, by the way, is because your threat generation is so low and heroic throw actually generates high threat towards the targets. So if you spam this, you will have enough threat for the entire fight. Otherwise, you might actually lose it towards the other tank, which is a big problem, mind you. After that, you are able to run away, charge back in, get your threat if you need it, and, well, your rage if you need it, and then you can go back towards your general rotation. But as it goes, um, by the way, if you didn't know, um, you've also got two charges all the time as an arms warrior, uh, a protection warrior, whilst the other ones have to actually group themselves into it, and you don't. Your generation for threats on charge now has no cooldown either, so you can charge twice and get 40 rage out of it, rather than having to wait a certain amount of seconds before the next charge to get your rage from it. So there's a very positive thing. What else do we have in front of us? Well, we've got a new ability, Ignore Pain. Ignore 90% of all the damage you take for a certain amount of time. This can consume from 20 rage up to 60 rage. The more rage you consume, the better it becomes. As in, it goes exponentially higher, the amount of damage you can actually reduce. So what do we have comes talents? Well, we've got ourselves the first row, Shockwave, Stormbolt, Warbringer. Now, Warbringer causes our our charge to deal AOE damage and stun targets within five and stun targets within five yards. 
Of course, we've also got the other ones, which were Stormbolt and the Shockwave. Now, Shockwave is an AoE stun. Stormbolt is a single target stun. Uh, Stormbolt actually does more damage than your AoE stun now actually does the Shockwave. But it's still quite useful, and I would actually prefer using Stormbolt over Shockwave because we're a single target tank. Then we've got Safeguard, Impending Victory and Inspiring Presence. Now, Safeguards don't use this. I hope this will get changed. I hope this actually gets changed with a different ability because Safeguard applies to an ability learned at level 72. Which means this one does not exist yet. I hope it's going to get changed with anything else. If anything, Never Surrender might be quite quite useful or, you know, Indomitable might be the best one we can actually get because Indomitable makes us the best tank in the entire game. Well, especially single target. But it just makes us unbeatable whenever it comes to single targets. And we might not even need a proper healer. Just a renew on us will do us and we'll be fine for the rest of the life. Um, but apart from that, we've got Impending Victory. We've got Inspiring Presence. Now, Inspiring Presence only applies to other people. So it does not apply to yourself. As you can see, this one's got my buff. If I change it, he doesn't. But if you look at my own buffs, uh, I still don't get it. So it's only to other allies, not yourself. Now what this does is it gives you all your allies a 3% leech of their HP. Impending victory, uh, uh, well a 3% leech in general, I'm sorry, not of their HP, of their damage even. Um, impending victory does, a, does as it did before, it heals you for a certain amount every 15 seconds. This uh, every 30 seconds. This is a very good ability and I like this a lot because it's the only heal we have. We don't have any other heal in the game, this is the only one. Then we've got Renewed Fury, Ultimatum, Avatar. Now, Avatar deals 20% extra damage for 20 seconds. It's a useful ability, but I don't actually like it too much. I've got Ultimatum. Uh, your Shield Slam causes your... Shield Slam critical strikes cost your... Cause your next focus rage to not cost any rage. As a tank, you will not be using crits. Which means this will barely ever get used. Which means don't use it. I never got Renewed Fury. Now, Renewed Fury causes your Ignore Pain to also enrage you, increasing all the damage you deal by 10% for 6 seconds. Ignore Pain is used every 10 seconds at least. So this means you've got this up a very lot of the time. So this is your go-to ability. You can use Avatar if you've got a target which stuns you or, or roots you or snares you on certain times, which means Avatar is a better choice just for the survivability. But Renewed Fury is a better one in general if you want to do any damage at all. Last row. Crackling Thunder, Bounding Stride, Warlord's Challenge. Now, Crackling Thunder increases the radius of your Thunderclap by 100%. Bounding Stride, your Heroic Leap, which is my favourite ability in the game, now has a lower cooldown and increases your movement speed by 70% for 3 seconds after using it. And then you've got Warlord's Challenge. Your Berserker Rage is... When you use Berserker Rage, you may use Taunt with no cooldown, and every target that is taunted moves 50% faster towards you. I don't think this one is too useful, but it might be useful. Since we are a single target tank, Crackling Thunder might not actually get used too much, but it might be useful whenever we get a certain amount of packs and you're the only tank. So, yes, you can use it, but Bounding Stride feels the better one because you've got more... Uh, well, it just means you can go into combat a bit faster, despite having two charges as well, which is, of course, always useful. And then we've got the Arms Warrior. Now, Arms is an incredibly strong spot. You are the single target monster, and my favourite spec in the game. Now, you are very bursty, you've got your burst window using Colossus Smash, but you are somewhat luck-oriented because of it. Nevertheless, I'm going to introduce you to how the Arms Warrior actually plays to get the right target. So, first of all, Colossus Smash is your main damaging ability, followed by Overpower. And then you've got yourself Mortal Strike, followed by Slam. Rend, can you, you can put Rend in on top. Um, you can see the priority list on the left side right now. And you will put that in whenever you've got it talented, but you don't need to use it. Now, Execute does less damage than Overpower does um, in the amount of rage that it costs. So, when you are in the Execute phase, you use Colossus Smash, followed by Overpower, followed by Execute. And then comes your filler spell, which is um, either Rend or 
Uh, I, I doubt you'll ever use a mortal strike in that case, but you, you might, maybe, if you're doing PvP, for example, to reduce the healing. But yeah, those are your main abilities as an arms warrior. So why are you so fun? Because Colossus Smash causes you to deal extra damage towards the target, 15% extra damage towards the target for 8 seconds. It's a, it has a 45 second cooldown, but you can reduce the cooldown, you can actually reset your Colossus Smash using Rage. Every one Rage you use has a 0.65% chance to reset Colossus Smash. You've also got some defensive abilities. Um, as I said, Arms is able to actually tank. Now this tanking comes from your talents mostly, as you've got defensive stance up here, you've got second wind, which allow you which allows you to actually properly tank, but we'll get to that into later features. So, what are our main defensive cooldowns? Well, we've got ourselves the die by the sword. Fury does not have this anymore, but you do. And what this does is increase your parry chance by 100% and reduces all the damage you take by 30%, which means the bleeds on you, the, the dots on you and anything else, the magical abilities that go out onto you. Um, you don't have your spell reflection anymore. You do have this ability, which is my favourite one in the game, as I said before, the Heroic Leap. It's a lovely ability. You've got yourself a uh, Heroic Throw, which has got a cooldown onto it, and you've got yourself Charge. You've got yourself Intimidating Shout, which also does as it always did before. You've got your Hamstring and, of course, your Interrupts. When it comes to AoE abilities, you've, of course, got a few of those as well. You've got yourself a Cleave and you've got yourself Whirlwind. But since you are single target focused, um, I, I would not use those, even if you are attacking five targets. Uh, actually, five targets, yes. Four targets, no. So, let's take a look at Talents then. What have we got on the first row? We've got Overpower, Dauntless and Sweeping Strikes. Now, Sweeping Strikes cause your Execute and Mortal Strike to hit a second target nearby. Um, this is good when you, whenever you're going to Cleave. However, I would still prefer not to use these because without the Overpower, you will feel a bit empty in your abilities. Because the Overpower, the proc of it, makes, your, ma makes a bit of a difference in how you go through your rotation. Otherwise, it's always just Colossus Smash, Mortal Strike, Slam, 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 Slam. So with this, you, you become a bit more fun to play, in fact, a lot more fun to play. I've got Dauntless. Um, your abilities become much less fun and cost 20% less rage. Because at level 70, we hit every, every time on our targets, on the bosses, on the, on the level 72 targets, the, the elites, whatever, we will always hit them. And so the abilities cost 20% less rage is not really needed because we generate a lot of rage in general. The only time we don't is when we start the fight. But whenever we get our Colossus Smash out, we get our Rend out, we get our fir first overpower, then we're pretty much grand because after that our rage regeneration is just our rage generation even is just high enough to not even bother about Dauntless. Then we've got Shockwave, Stormbolt and Double Time. Shockwave and Stormbolt, same as before, Double Time gives you a double charge. Further Battle, Rend, Avatar. Avatar does as it did before. Rend is a bleed on the target and Further Battle causes your Whirlwind to deal 50% extra damage to your main target, to the one you are targeting. I tried changing targets using the, the Whirlwind ability, you can't actually get it to deal the 50% extra damage to multiple targets as you could before, but unfortunately, anyway, but the damage you gain from it is not high enough to make it actually worthwhile in your rotation and Rend actually feels like it fills up the spot just a bit better. And the reason this is because Whirlwind costs 25 Rage. Now Slam does about the same damage, just a bit less, but it, does it only costs 15 Rage. You can actually use it and replace it with Slam, but I feel it makes the, the class a bit too slow to, to play, and the damage you gain from it isn't too high. You gain just a tiny little bit of extra damage, but that tiny little bit to make your class a lot more boring is just not worth it. And we've got second, second Winds, Bounding Stride, Defensive Stance. Now, Defensive Stance, you deal 10% less damage, you take 20% less damage, which means you deal 10% more damage, kind of, in some forgotten world. I don't like it because it doesn't increase your threat generation, which is what you want to do if you're going to tank in the first place. I've got Bounding Stride, did as it before, and 
second wind. Now this one is weird. Restore six percent of your HP every one second when you have not taken damage for five seconds. Now the weird part is the higher my HP becomes, as you can see it's now seven percent of my total HP and I don't understand why this actually is. But there you go. Now this is a very, 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 very good talent, and I would prefer it above defensive stance in every possible way. However, if you are going to main tank, and you've got a hunter to redirect you, then yes, you can actually use the defensive stance. Otherwise, second wind is the way to go. Now, how does this work? Um, what this means is we're a very good off tank, because every time we use our abilities, um, say, every time we use by, die by the sword, we gain 8% 8, 8 of not being damaged, uh, as long as they're melee. Which means, for 8 seconds long, you will not take any damage, so that that's at least 5 seconds from the second wind, and if you time it well, you get an another 3 up to 5 seconds after that, which means you get quite a good amount of HP back from it. You can also run away using Heroic Leap and you know, keep yourself out of combat for a while, and then your second wind will go up automatically as well. But those are not the actual choice you want to go after. So, this makes you a good off tank. I'm going to go into detail on that later, so after the Fury one, I'm going to show you how good this actually works. But of course, we want to see Fury as well, so let's go over to Fury. And now, as I said, Fury is a very, very, very AoE focused specialization. And why is this? Because Whirlwind is part of our general rotation. Now, Whirlwind makes it so every time we use Blot First or Rampage, which is our main damaging ability, we will deal that same damage, 50% of it, up to four additional targets. So every time we go into combat, we can damage up to five targets for an insane amount of damage, and after that we stagger back to lower numbers. But up to five targets, we are always the boss in damage. Two targets we're about the second to third, three targets up to five targets, nobody can beat in the amount of damage that we do to those targets. No one. We are always on the top. So, what have we got going for us? Well, we've got our Whirlwind, which is our main ability, as I said before, but this is, of course, not the only thing we're going to play with. So, our general rotation is going to be, if we can execute, we will execute. Then comes our block first, but only after a Whirlwind. Then comes Rampage, but only after a Whirlwind. And then comes our filler, which is going to be Whirlwind. So there you go. You can use your Raging Blow in single targets. If you are going to every single target as a Fury Warrior, then you can. And you will do a significant amount of damage, but not as high as Arms Warrior would do. The thing is, your damage becomes exponentially better the more targets you, you get, up to 5. And then you become exponentially worse again. So, let's take a look at our talents. We've got War Machine, Endless Rage and Fresh Meat. Fresh Meat is not a good choice. Blot First has a 30% increased crit chance against targets above 80% HP. I don't like it too much. Endless Rage. Your auto attacks generate 30% additional rage. Now this in my opinion is the best one. And the reason why? Well, every time, well I'm going to go over War Machine first. So War Machine, killing a target, which means getting the killing blow, Grants you 30% haste and 30% movement speed for 10 seconds. It's not good against the boss, but if you've got a lot of adds, as long as you get a killing blow, you will get a lot of benefit from it. In fact, a massive amount of benefit from it. You are a very fast-paced specialization, and you will play like a fast-paced monster. But, of course, this doesn't mean you're the best one. Um, when it comes to single target, of course, you've got arms being better than you. Um, if you're AoE, then you are probably going to be the king of everyone. But, there's of course more coming to it. Now why do I say Endless Rage is the best one? You will always have one target which you are auto-attacking. Even when AoEing, you will make sure you're hitting one target. Because every time you attack the target, you will gain Rage. Now you need the Rage to spend in Rampage. And every time you Rampage, you will become Enraged. Now every time you Enrage, you deal, well, a lot of damage. Now what does Enrage do then? Well, Enrage increases your attack speed by 100% and increases your damage taken by 30%. Don't, don't worry, you gain more HP as well. You gain 15% extra HP from Titan's Grip whenever you're in um, Fury. So, Enrage is our main damaging ability and every time Blot First or Rampage crits, we get an Enrage. 
Now when rage increases our attack speed, which means we get even more rage from it, which means we can use blood first and rampage even more often, especially rampage. And every time we use our rampage, we get another more of those attack speeds. And you know, it, it goes up and up and up and up. And every time we go do crits, we gain more attack speed. So we are a crit based spec still. And we are going to be the same as before, kind of in the same in, in armor. Um, our crit chance has to be up to 45%, so I need to get more crits. Our haste can go a bit lower, but there you go, that's the main chance you have to be. Now, this might change in the future, mind you, there might be changes, crits might become less useful, anything like that. But every time you crit, you gain more attack speed, the attack speed you used to get yourself the rampage up, and there you go, that's why I use Endless Rage. Then, Shockwave Storm Bolt double time. Nothing new. Wrecking Ball Outburst Avatar. Avatar is the same outburst, just don't use it. It will enrage you when you use Berserker Rage, but it's a one minute cooldown, it's, it's not very useful, so I don't. I would not use it. Wrecking Ball, your Whirlwind deals 200% increased damage whenever you attack. Well, it has a chance to. Since you are AoE focused, this is definitely your go-to talent and you'll always use this one. Don't use the other ones. You can use Avatar in, in PvP situations maybe, I'm not too certain, I don't do PvP. But Wrecking Ball PvE-wise, always the go-to talent, except single targets. Which, even then, single targets is still better, actually. Then you've got Furious Charge, Bounding Stride, War Paint. Bounding Stride is the same. War Paint in Rage now only increases your damage taken by 20% rather than 30. And Furious Charge causes your Blood First to heal you for 300% rather than, uh, well, 300% more. That means three times as much. Which is uh, actually pretty good. Um, Blood First, by the way, no longer heals for 1%, but 4% of our total HP, so that means it's 12%, which is quite big. So, what else do we have in front of us? Well, as a warrior, we no longer have, well, a fury warrior, we no longer have ourselves the defensive cooldowns we had before. In fact, we now have Enraged Regen. Now, hmm, it's not what it used to be. Now, Enraged Regen reduces the damage taken by 30%, and your blood first heals for an additional 20% of your HP. This 20% total, not 20% of 4, it's 20% of your total HP, so that means in total that becomes 24%, which is massive, by the way. So you can use it at least twice, that's 50% of your HP, give or take a few. Pretty good. So now I'm going to show you a clip of me playing the Arms Warrior as a tank. And of course it's going to be the last bit of the video, so if you did like it, press the like button, and I will see you guys later in the next video. Hi! I don't like your face. How do you feel about dying? Quite well. Yeah, Thank my you sparks. Don't hit my sparks. You killed my spark. Oh. It's this fucking. Don't kill my spark. Take that spark. Don't break into I'm my not. car. Kill it then. Don't <laughs> hit the spark! Oh. Fucking spirit! It's fine, I, I got the spark so far, so... See, the sparks re literally make it. They are the reason I can survive on not Yeah. Okay. Oof. He didn't take any sparks Easy. on the last few seconds, so... That hurt me a bit, but it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'll take right, you take left. It's alright. So, what are main, what are our, ugh. the most AOE focused um, melee thing, and the most off tanky kind of thing. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Maybe I should not be explaining these things that way. And let's do this again. Pretty complete, no missing abilities, anything like that. And of course, the warrior has. And. <laughs> You've got yourself Ignore Pain, which reduces all the damage you take by 90% for the next somewhat things. I'm going to have to read.